Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, class. This is Professor Coyote welcoming you to our new series on Europa Universalis for our new campaign here in Robotania. Or should I say, Chryso e Robotania. Because, as I had said earlier, we're going to focus our campaign here on Wales. We're going to go with the Welsh campaign. And uh, also, you'll use that as a good area around here for the new Rule Britannia stuff. Now, we're going to get right into it here really quickly. I'm going to select England and we're going to start it because you do have to release Wales in order for this, this achievement to work. It still works in Iron Man, though. You just have to release it and then play it. So let me let me get that good old uh, whales going. And as we started, um, I this first episode is going to be uh, just an, up, an overview of Rubatania, some of the things. It's not a huge change because this is more of an immersion pack than a full DLC. Um, I'm going to go my usual historical start, uh, explaining the history. Um, this will actually be uh, as much really changing some preconceptions I had from the first time I did Wales, thanks to a few watchers who uh, keep chimed in on that last campaign. Um, and then also just giving some overview, uh, thoughts on how things are, what the campaign is going to be, the achievement itself, that sort of thing. Now, we don't need to worry about this, Lancaster, England, because we're not going to be them for too long. So... What we need to do to start this campaign, we need to go into Diplomacy and Release Wales. You hit play that Release Subject and boom. So now we are the Duchy of Wales. All right, as you can see here, let's go Let's go over really quickly some uh, just some of the changes here. Uh, part of Rule Britannia, being that it's an immersion pack, is. If you remember the first immersion pack, that was... Uh, Third Rome, where they focused largely on Russia. That's how we got a whole bazillion batches of of uh, personal unions and vassals, and also the astounding changes to the orthodoxy that they then carried over to um, to Muslims and that kind of thing. So here in Rule Britannia, the immersion pack is both sides of the English Channel with a large focus on, of course, as the title says, Britain and the British Isles itself. Um, now, some of the minor stuff that's gone on is the Low Country here, they've, they've tweaked a few things. As you can see, Friesland and Holland both got split in half and have two as opposed... Holland has three, Friesland has two. Uh, Brabant got to kind of hosed. Uh, they did change, I think they were talking about in the notes... Ah, they changed Lindbergh to Upper, upper uh, Gulders. That way they can, uh, in order to reflect that Lindbergh and its outer, its outer lands would actually be, by their standards, two separate areas. So they kind of just said, screw it, we'll just take the area itself. And uh, Galray uh, is Upper Gulders. That's just the whole thing. Um, focusing down here, as you can see, this area of Burgundy or the Burgund Burgundwine has been broken into bits because uh, and given a couple of more f forts. I think there's no the Ines was always there, and France itself also got just I think I look I think they gained one. Um, it, they did tweak a little bit they they Brittany how has five provinces and as you can see here this is the bigger change in north france is uh Brittany. i'm sorry <laughs> the normandy area got cracked into three alancion um is was already there so actually i'm sorry it got cracked into two so we have canon Constantine to go with co uh so britain now has five provinces in northern france plus calais uh, that way it makes it should make things a little bit more kind of testy between France and Britain. Uh, Britain itself, I don't think they actually tweaked the 325. Okay, so they didn't tweak the actual um, their t 
total development, they just kind of split it up into a few things. Like, for instance, Cumbria is, is by itself, and finally, Man, the Island of Man itself, is now its own province that has its own achievement and its own culture. You could theoretically play, if you really, 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 really wanted to uh, <laughs> get really hard. Um, in fact, this is even listed as very hard. It's not listed as impossible. But man, you could, if you release them, as you can see here, they have their own kind of uh, core province nation. They have their own achievement to, as man, have an empire of all island provinces. That's what it specifically says, island provinces. So I'm not entirely sure if that means, say, Norway. Uh, Norway does have two provinces, but it is an island unto itself. Or if it means, say, just things like the pharaohs here that use a single province as an island. Um, that's that's part of what made me not want to do it. I thought it would be kind of cute, but then again, man also only has three developments, so... Mm. We're talking like almost not quite three mountains level hard, because the wiki describes it as, as very hard, not impossible, so that would puts it in the same category as, say, the Chrysanthemum Throne. Um, as far as difficulty goes... Um, I believe. No, I think the Seth and Throw got uh, designated back down to hard. So we're talking Sun God, uh, where you have to embrace and be Inca and be awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's, that is, uh, you see that they did tweak a little bit. Uh, we have Scarborough. So North Arboretum got split in half. You have York and who, I'm sorry, Hull. Um, the Wales area itself got a, an additional one. Um, they kind of took chunks out of all three of them, and you have Montgomery now with a level two fort to begin with. So that's actually pretty nice for splitting it off. Um, as you can see, Marches got split off. I believe it lost its... Yeah, there's no more fort here in Marches, so you actually... Uh, splitting off Montgomery actually puts... Um, England down to one fort, I believe, just the, the home in London, but that got upgraded with three. Cornwall got split into Cornwall and Devon. Um, and they sort of, like, kind of tweaked here. Uh, Marches got split itself into Coventry and Shrewsbury. Um, and like I said, it had its, uh, its fort removed and given to, uh, Montgomery here. Uh, another thing they've done is... Scotland has its own little buddy now, the Isles, which is, it's just considered the Isles, it's the Highlanders kind, if I remember they're like Highlander culture, or this Isle, yeah, they're, they're Highlander culture, but not, so they have their own buddy there, like, it's just, it's three, um, and, and Ireland is further shattered into a bit. So I think it's one, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen provinces with pale. Uh, see, I believe that means they added, uh, was it an eleven or nine for? I think it's like two or three more country, uh, more, more factions, if you will. Uh, Kildare got split off into uh, Kildare and Offaly, Ormond is new, uh, Munster got split off of Desmond, and, uh, okay, so it added three more, um, and Tyrone got split into your Tyr Connell. Um, so these guys, makes Ireland a little bit more tasty to try and go for and complete, um, and so that is what the changes map wise are that's that's so it's it's kind of very minor due to the fact it's just the islands and uh the north the south channel here uh some of the other changes sorry i'm just uh eh, there all right so the other changes here in Britannia is you have the completely new mission tree, which it does cover over. That's decisions, not missions, idiot. The mission tree does carry over for Wales, too. You have these whole new mission trees where you can see what's coming up, maybe start planning for it ahead. Um, like, for instance, you know, like we can do high income. I don't know why we do high income because you don't get much, but whatever. Well, let's get it for free. 
So let's complete that. So we got that completed. Um, you saw what I gave you there. Okay, you may not have seen what I got you there. I think it's... Uh, okay, construction costs and construction time for 25 years. So this is what you need to do, and that's what it gives you. Now, we need have to have at least five churches, five workshops to get 50 pow points in admin and a 25-year building spree, which ups tax income. So that's that. Um, that's, that's what the missions are. Now, you still have the old decisions, and those will pop up as they, they, they come. So that's the first thing that they tweaked with, uh, which means this will more than likely be coming for most groups. Because as the changes to um, orthodoxy did get carried over to the Arab, uh, the Arabian patch for the changes in, Mus in uh, the Muslim faiths, as well as things like the uh, Metropolitans got carried over. That uh, I can definitely see this mission's going to be coming over, and and then you know, and basically how they do more patches is they revisit other areas by going, here's your mission tree, France. Here's your mission tree, Poland, Lithuania, that kind of thing. So that's a big change there. Ah, uh, ba 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 The next thing is, and I'm going down the the the, the expansion features list here. Uh, there's going to be the Industrial Revolution will pop up late game. Um, We'll get more into it as it shows up, but basically what that's going to be is as your, as you put more more development into particular um, areas, it could pop up with what is going to be their new secondary resource, that of coal. And coal being there is apparently going to just tweak with your productivity and, and, and money making, so, you know, ups that. I can definitely see whales having a lot of coal if we can get the production going. So I might actually be sinking a lot of production into the Welsh. We might end up basically uh, having to go build a bit tall. I mean, that achievement itself uh, that we're chasing, which I'll go into, doesn't actually require to get a whole bunch of stuff. It's not like I have we have to spread whales across the world kind of thing. So uh, building tall, getting the production values up, um, numbers up. That's that's that, that's definitely kind of what we want to do anyway, and that that sounds like it'll lead into this industrial revolution, because um, I will historically the Welsh lands have always been fairly coal rich, so I could definitely see them carrying that over. Um, ah, sorry, I kind of scatter brained here. It's gonna like ah, let's go into see what what Wales gets. Uh, there is going to be a new thing called innovativeness. Which it's kind of the the tech version of Absolution. Uh, you will get a batch of it for being ahead of neighbors. You see, you can see you get uh, you get first an idea, you get a point of innovativeness. First in a tech period, you get two innovativeness. Being ahead of time gives you a boost a month, and being behind time loses some. Now, innovativeness, like I said, it's like the new Absolutism. Absolutism. As you can see here, you mostly, uh, if you can get it to 100, <laughs> if, it cranks on your army, navy, tradition decay, and your power costs. It looks like it's at a 1%, so I'm assuming it's, it's, you know, it, it, if innovativeness goes to 100, you can basically you get 0.01% for every point of innovativeness. Um, and the next thing that's important is going to be them attempting to try and tweak with the Navy again, that of naval doctrine. Now, we can't get into it yet, because as you can see from that red space, you need to have a force limit of 20. Force limit, not necessarily a force, but a force limit of 20 to be able to change your doctrine. So we'll go look into those when we finally have the ability to have 20 boats. I think right now our force limit's four. Nope. Uh, that's the, that's the uh, land. Our force limit for boats is seven. So we'll go into that when it arrives. Um, there is the new thing of Angli uh, new option of religion for Anglicanism, and I believe that'll get popped up uh, uh, for us later. That is the, of course, the British branch of Protestantism that allows you to basically burn through your consorts. I mean, there's an achievement for that: is <laughs> under one ruler have six different consorts. So. There's that. That's that's a new thing. We might look into Anglicanism 
depends on how... I don't know. Maybe we'll go Anglican or uh, Welsh if that pops up. Uh, apparently there's a new option for knowledge sharing amongst your allies or subjects. It helps with your institution spread. Um, we will look into that. There And then there's a new units and music. But that's the changes. That's all. It's, it's just it's 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 not big. I would say that the the future mission trees and the change to naval doctrine are the big ones this patch. So we'll see how it goes there. All right, and let's look at Wales a little bit. But f first, at the achievement that we're going to be chasing. The achievement we're looking for is called Home and Away. As Wales, hold on to Cardiff, which of course is Gwynedd here, uh, London, Dublin, which I believe is called Kildara. No, that's Keldare. I'm not sure which one they consider to be Dublin here. It might be this one. Um, yeah, okay, I realize I probably botched that as far as my geography roll. <laughs> Sorry. It might be England. But one of these three. <laughs> you hold Dublin. You hold... Edinburgh. Which is Lothian here. And those are the easy ones. Then you have to hold Paris and Rome. Now, the reference to this, of course, is the Six Nations Rugby. With the Six Nations, of course, being Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, France, and Italy. So, you know, like always, <laughs> Paradox does a tee-hee in their achievement uh, referencing modern sports. I think this is the something like 15th achievement that directly re refers to either rugby or football. Um, so that's the achievement we're going to go for, and that's my it. And that one's going to be a bit toughy. As I said, it's not huge. It's not the own every island province. But that means we have to crack through France and the Pope. Um, so it's definitely going to be a long-term one. I can see us probably having to go through for a while. And that's cool. That's awesome. That means we just need to focus uh, focus on our military and, like I said, build a bit tall. And as we see here, now, finally going to things, Wales, when you split it off, starts with 15 development, which is actually a little bit better than when I did that uh, one, uh, the one run. So 15 development. And uh, unfortunately, this isn't going to be the Glindewear. It's going to be... Uh, the Griffith. Uh, the Griffith Dynasty. Uh, alas and alas. I would have liked it to be uh, Glindewear for old time's sake, but uh, we'll see what happens. M maybe a Glindewear will show up and we'll, like, you know, abandon the current dynasty. Let us look over here. Ah, doing the wrong thing. Oh, they don't show you that one up here anymore. I guess it's. Oh, it's always been the idea, stupid. All right, let's start. So, Welsh Tradition gives us morale plus 10 and attrition plus 1. When we complete them all, we get land force limit of 25%, which being our area, that's pretty nifty. Uh, we get... Now, these, if you remember our first one, I believe I did actually manage to... Uh, they didn't change these, it doesn't look like... I did basically kind of kit bash the custom nation to get these, but we'll go over this again. So we got, uh, stab, minus 20. We got yearly prestige, plus one. We have national unrest, minus one. Legitimacy, production efficiency, idea cost, and tolerance, missionary strength. Now, as you can see here, it's gonna be tough. We do get our military ideas to begin with, so that's good, but that's the only military idea we get in the Royal Army, period period at all. Ah. So, like I said, we might have to build a bit tall, do production. See what we can do here in Ireland, because that's going to be our first target, is basically try to, once we break away from Britain, uh, we need to make nice, nice people that will help us break away, and then start eating Ireland. Um, um, um. But, 
put that out of the way. Let's end this video. Because, uh, you know, as I said, this video is largely going to be an introduction to things. And we're already at about the 20 minute mark. With a quick history lesson. Draw, this is Professor Coyote. You should be used to it by now with the previous campaigns. I always like to start with a quick history of the area where we are. And why... As I said before, this shouldn't be. And what I mean by shouldn't be is you shouldn't have to go in and split out whales. You should not. Not, not at 1444. I have made my argument in my previous video, so if you want that rant, but we will continue it really quickly. In 1404, there was the War for Independence of Wales. Wales had been kind of run over sometime in the early 1300s? Like 1300? Maybe late 1200s. But it had been run over and had been trying to get integrated by old England. But 1404, there was a war for independence when, when Prince Owen Glyndwyr did his best to try and split off. Uh, they actually did get a little bit of, a, of, of uh, recognition from France and Spain, which is interesting to note that these two castles and some of the smaller ones were built to keep the Welsh out of their own lands. So it's interesting to note that they were able to even get any kind of uh, foreign backing to begin with. So they did split off. They even There was even some actual help from, Brit uh, from British nobles who had a plan to split the country into three. Because remember, Scotland was still uh, independent at this time, so this would be the, th the area they're talking about. Northern Britain... Uh, focused here on Scotland and Southern Britain, which would be uh, quite a few areas that would actually end up in not British hands, but Welsh hands. Because the original plan was they were going to add... And sorry, I keep zooming in and out. Let's see here. At Cornwall, and uh, this is my first thing I'd like to fix. I had wondered why Cornwall was considered to be Welsh culture-wise. Not yes. Whereas the Cornish people are kind of their own thing. Well, that's because the Cornish people are Welsh. They're 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 not Welsh Welsh. They are relatives of the Welsh, and in fact, Cornish shares a lot of ties to the Welsh culture uh, and language. And in fact, the British consider Cornwall the Cor and the Cornish people to be called West Wales, which first I was like, well, why would it be South Wales? But Cornwall is actually more West than Wales. So that is actually very accurate. That was accurate from the beginning, that Cornwall, instead of having to split... Now, yes, they can split off into their own country, and nation, but they would be still be considered Welsh, so therefore trying to unify the culture would mean they would have to invade Wales, as opposed to the other way around that, that we're going to be doing. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I believe I said in comments, uh, though, or or even in, in, in offhand here, is that Welsh is considered to be Gaelic, and I should w smack myself for that. I should smack myself because Welsh... While, yes, is a Celtic culture, they are Brit, uh, Brythonic, uh, Brythonic, meaning that they are, of course, related to the Britons and the Cor Cornish, but that is their own subsection of British Isles uh, Celtic culture. There is the, the Brythons, the Gaels, which would be Ireland and West Scotland and the Picts. So, to call Welsh a Gaelic language, or an offshoot of Gaelic, is an absolute farce. It was wrong. It was like saying that, uh, uh, that English is French. Uh, 
I, ergo, yes, maybe a long time ago, there's a lot of sharing. After all, they both uh, have a lot of Latin roots. But no, it is absolutely a different language. So there's that. So anyway, uh, so that is why I was saying that here in Wales should have been, should should it should be like this to begin with. They should be a personal union, uh, a vassal, uh, one of the two. You shouldn't have to go in and split them off. Corn Cornwall and Man, that's fine. They are distinct cultures, but they have been British for a long time, or at least in British hands. But Owain, though he died before 1444, the Brits didn't go in until about the mid-1500s to fully stamp out this nonsense of being independent Welsh. So, there we go. Now, I would like to thank, thank a couple of people because a good historian always thanks his resources. I to say their resources, his or her resources. And though I didn't do some Though I had done my research beforehand, I would like to thank both. Actually, I'm sorry, not both. I think I have three watchers to thank for this. I have uh, Dewey Simon, Luke Larkin, and I do apologize beforehand, David Upfrank. And I'm pretty sure I really butchered your name because your name was, of course, in very proud Wales to the point where it looks like you have a. Uh, flag of the of Saint David. Not Saint. David. Well, you have a very very <laughs> Welsh flag on your thing. Uh, I almost said Saint David, didn't I? Uh, mixed with a. Uh, let me double check here. Yeah, oh, it's St. David, mixed with, of course, the cross of Neath. So you're very, very Welsh and very, very proud of it. And therefore, I also very, very thank you for, for liking my original video and hopefully liking this video. Thank you, David. Now. One last little bit I would also like to show to, to say. You noticed that um, I made commentary about the Welsh flag, the 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 Idrego. Uh, that I why isn't that uh, the flag of Wales when it pops off? And why did I have to make it myself? Because it didn't. Well, I mean, it existed from about the 1450s on, but it wasn't the actual Welsh flag until 1959. I mean, there's still some argument on what, um, how they want to do it, because some independent movements have used other, other symbols. Um, this one is very close to the Welsh flag of the time, the banner of Owain Glyndwyr, but it's wrong. And you'll actually notice that when I use the flag in my thumbnail, I try to do the correct flag. Why I'm saying it's wrong versus correct when it's not that much different is because, and this, you know, and and please, please correct me in the comments because obviously I, I <laughs> I'm more than willing to listen to you guys in the comments. The Banner of Old England Weir has been shown in the past to be rampant lions, and this, I know, is absolute geekery. We have now gone into heraldric terms. <laughs> but, Glindwyr's banner has is basically the same thing as this one. You have the correct, correct coloring in your quadrants, but the lions are different. From what I have seen so far, the lions in the traditional Owain's banner are rampant. What that means is they're standing up on their hind legs and doing their raw. Uh, the, with the traditional way of uh, passants. I'm sorry, not passant. They are they are rampant, but they are just uh, traditional rampant. Um, even down to other things that are rampant. <laughs> but... The flag that Paradox uses for Wales is a different one. 
Now, this could be, once again, an argument of, uh, of differences, but heraldry is really, really specific in that different things often mean different things. I, I know, but what I mean is different, even just kind of different ways means they're different, uh, different symbology. The flag that, that, that uh, Paradox uses and you can see here, just, just barely here in the corner, in fact, it's a little bit better, is what's known as Passant. S more specifically, and like I said, we're getting into real tight heraldic geekery here. Because the lions are looking at you, it's what's known as Lion Passant Gardent. I.e., they are on guard looking at you. But, once again, traditionally, Owain's banner and the one I'm using from the thumbnail they are rampant. They are on their back legs. They're yelling at you. you know, they're, they're roaring, if you want to use a, a, a specific kind of language. So, they're close. And that's the flag I'll be using. I mean, yeah, I want to use the, the, you know, the, the modern Welsh flag, because it's cool. <laughs> but, you know, I want to try and get, especially because I didn't have to custom make this. Alright, so... With that all in mind, let's look really quickly as to what we've got. We've got 15 development. There's uh, five development in Gwynedd and Glen Morgan. Gwynedd has livestock, Glen Morgan has iron, and it does, okay, it does show you where the coal's going to be. You have to have 20 development in coal and 20 innovation, meaning that you both have the, uh, the, the the ways but the means it has to go into enlightenment which means that's like the last institution so we're talking 1750 so you only get about mm, I'm sorry 1700 1700 1700 or 1750 is the enlightenment blah 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 1700 okay so basically you have at most 120 uh, 20 years to get the benefit out of this and then you get the benefit out of it, which I think it'll tweak the uh, the price that it's making, that kind of thing, and the production. So we only have coal here in Glen Morgan, which I don't know. If they're giving you iron here in Montgomery, they should give you coal there too. But it does look like okay. We could go into Chester because that's where you get your salt. There's Derby that's got coal. And these are plans to go for it anyway, so. And Northumberland. So basically, you've got this Derby, Chester, Clump, Northumberland, uh, West. No. Uh, Ayrshire, here. There's any coal, but... Oh, there's still the copper. Okay. So that's all the coal that is there in that area. So you do get a, a potential coal. Doesn't look like you get any coal around here, but you get paper and, and glass. Ah, oh, ba 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 You have to build your army, and that's actually the first thing we're gonna do immediately anyway. Is we build army. So they at least give you the manpower to start an army. You don't get any sailors to start. Um, you are still their their uh, their vassal because you have to release them in order to start. Only merchant trade post. start making money much either. But then again, that's also because the band hasn't even started yet. Okay, so you do get a plus four balance. Woo! So, not much you can start with, but then again, you're all starting at as low. But hey, the 15... The 15 development isn't too bad. I mean, it does give you a four as opposed to a three in your army limit, so... 
So there we go. So that's our start here in the proud lands of Wales. Join me, won't you, as we start this campaign. I think we're going to have a little fun. Um, we have our clear goal of basically eating, of uh, taking the islands, at least northern France, and then going down to Rome. So I said this, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. But it will be fun. So, with that in mind, I hope you have a very excellent rest of your day. And with that, class dismissed. Thank you.